Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'll bring this regular meeting of uh, council to order for September the 20th, 2022. Result of the agenda for the September the 20th, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I wasn't opposed, by the way, just a little slow. <clears throat> Result that the minutes of the September the 6th, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 4, 4.1. Result of this regular meeting of council, uh, sorry, this regular meeting be closed and the public hearing on variance order, order number one, 2022 be open. Moved by Councillor, or Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So then, if there's anybody else that will speak for or against it? That's correct, yeah. And so, you just open up for uh, variance order number one and the public. So there's nobody here to speak for or against it. So then, therefore, I guess with that, maybe if council has any questions about the variance? Can you explain? Okay. Um, Mr. Harvey? It's a uh, variance to allow a death bed for troops into the front yard. Anybody else? Councilor Morio. Um, just looking at the diagram here, like the setback is 30 feet uh, from the property line to the home. And it looks like the, like the entire home like, is within that 30 feet already. Like if it's yeah, that so one it would have been grandfathered in. Right, so he's already encroaching in that yeah. already. So adding it what looks like potentially a two foot deck or three foot deck, whatever that distance is, it's not going to be aesthetically unpleasing. Don't you? So. Any further discussion, Councilor Bobbick? So, has this <coughs> in the past has this been done, or is this will be this setting precedent? We have had. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, we have had warnings where it's passed. We've got to deal with it as a case by case basis. If there was residents near this, opposed to it, I would assume so. That's correct. Everyone within 100 meters would receive notice. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Wintoni. And your uh, <coughs> Director of Public Works, your opinion? Uh, we don't have an issue with this one. Thank you. affect the uh, water line. Thank you. Any further? Okay, result of the public hearing be adjourned and the regular meeting be reopened. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. All in favor? carried. Uh, 4.3, that will be a camera, legal uh, issues with the wellness center. 6, 6.1, whereas the town of Swan River greatly appreciates the recreational and industrial resources provided by Duck Mountain Provincial Park and the Porcupine 
mountain provincial forest, and whereas the province of Manitoba wants to encourage greater public awareness of Canada's forest. Therefore, be it resolved that September 18th to the 24th, 2022, be declared National Forest Week in the town of Swan River. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Mayor Marilyn Tony. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Seven point one. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Council Morio. Discussion. Council Morio. Um, Mr. Harvey, can you? Let us, uh, let us know, is the patching like asphalt work done for this year already? That's correct. Work they've uh, completed the work in their, the east. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Result of the August 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van report being received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3 Council reports. I'll start <coughs> with uh, Councillor Delorier. Um, I have something to report on the library that I need to report in camera tonight um, and then I guess just wanted to uh, offer my congratulations to those of you who, uh, around the table that will be uh, returning to council after the October election and to the three newcomers to council I wish you guys all the best of luck that's uh, very exciting uh, other than that I have nothing else to report okay. Councillor White So white. Thank you. Uh, on the 12th of September, I met with the immigrant services team, and uh, we're looking at uh, mechanisms to help all immigrants. And we've agreed on meeting uh, post-election in October to try to be more precise relative to the immigrant uh, people from Ukraine. And, uh, if that was agreed on, that we would probably do better with the possibility of lots of new uh, counseling. Uh, the cow meeting uh, on the 13th, we all attended. Uh, Swan Valley Outdoors, I uh, went there that evening. What's, what's that got to do with our town? They were planning to have a dinner on October the 22nd, which is close by, and the committee as a whole agreed we could do that, but we're going to reduce our numbers because those monies go directly to our community. And uh, I think two years ago, we put $50,000 into the Swan Valley area. So, a very worthwhile community project. Another activity on the 14th, I went to the Ronald Lake, and there's a program called Soldier On, where the federal government takes uh, soldiers who are incapacitated uh, with PPST, whatever those numbers are, or physical uh, nature. And in this instance, it took three of them to Ronald Lake to teach them how to fly fish. The uh, retired general, or colonel, and a bunch of other guys. And uh, I want to compliment the federal government for looking after those people in need trying to reintroduce them back into society through a, you know, activities such as uh, fly fishing. On the 19th, I attended the LP SAC meeting and all the groups updated. And I think it's fair to say, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, that the, uh, the contract generally has been signed with the First Nation community, communities that were in opposition to them cutting wood uh, based on further consultation. So there's a little bit, a bit of ambiguity there. And then, they got a little lucky when they were down with bringing wood from the west coast because one of the big mills caught on fire. There was a whole pile of wood left over that needed to be used after the fire. Wood in the, in the yard that needed to be used, so they were using that in the interim while the litigation was occurring. Uh, locally, uh, I can tell you that the medical service team, Mr. Mario and myself specifically, have uh, been uh, talking with the local doctors and the, the possibility of going to Dauphin and or Brandon to talk to the resident doctors. I would encourage meeting with the resident ones, the first years, because the resident twos, many of them are already signed. So in the new uh, next term or soon, I hope uh, 
tell us some more, you know, I'll find time to move there. But part of that would be making a proposal to the regional school where we could go with or without local doctors to talk about the, uh, the stipends we have to encourage them. I'm not sure that the young people are aware of the significant monies that are available for doctors, nurses, etc. Uh, today I had a, an honor, I think it was, I, I was working with the Snow Valley Snowmobile Club, they're raising monies to do uh, their snowmobile trails, what's that got to do with us? Uh, I suspect our community uh, blossoms when the snowmobilers are here. I know twice, a couple of years ago, they ran out of gas at the co-op, because the people who use that gas, they stay in their hotels, they stay in uh, residences, whatever. They spend a lot of money here, and with that four inches of snow they had in the North Mountain, two or three bridges that washed out. They're throwing a number of forty, fifty thousand dollars to fix those bridges, which is their responsibility at the moment. It doesn't appear there's any disaster assistance for them. So I would encourage them to come up to council and talk with us about what it's going to cost and the monies they bring to the community, and uh, we, we could discuss it. And uh, following the lead of uh, Councilor Delore, sir, I will really miss you. As, uh, more important as a friend, equally, nearly as important as a councilor, you bring a uh, a knowledge and a work ethic that is second to none. I appreciate working with you, and hopefully we'll keep you in line for all the debriefs, which we do regularly. And I'm looking forward to working with the three new ones. And, and it's sort of unfortunate that there wasn't an election, but we have three new people who wanted to be elected and who are on. And their gender, they're all women, they're all bright women, and uh, they'll keep us on our toes. So uh, I'm looking forward to the new team. and. So much respect uh, comes from the Tony and Councilor Friesen is longer with us who will bring their their energies up. So, so thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Bobbin. Thank you. Uh, yes, congratulations to the councilors who are elected. Activation, but at the same time I'd like to uh, thank the councilors that are going out for their years of service. Who's uh, going to be missed. Also, the mayor, congratulations. Thank you. Looking forward to working with you. Uh, just uh, to start with, I, you, Mr. Harvey, you received from Watershed uh, some documents on what I'm calling a rain garden. Uh, yeah, and I've not had a chance to. Exactly. I just thought, as long as you've got those, we'll go through that one these days. Uh, last night, I attended a meeting with Swan Valley West on shared services and stuff. I felt my personal very well. Looking forward to getting some of these uh, services uh, signed up. Uh, also, I'm, and, and this is if council wishes, or I, one of my thoughts are to have a meeting uh, with the landfill uh, contractors, uh, with the staff, and maybe our partners that uh, pay into the landfill in the near future. We could uh, have a meeting and go over the wants and needs and stuff like that that can happen at the landfill. So it's, Swan Valley West is a main partner on there, and I strongly advise it to be, uh, be included in this, so we can work on that as the council wishes to move forward or something like that. Uh, oh, just to speak a little bit, we talked with uh, Council Memorial, spoke a little bit of asphalt. Has there any, been uh, any thought put into doing some asphalt in front of the post office? That's uh, we taking a look at that. Uh, I believe that's on for next year. On to next year? Yeah. Would there be, I guess if we could have a look at it, would there be any chance of repairing it this year? Uh, Sterling is still in the area that you could buy some hot mix up and do a rough break over and uh, for the winter. But there's quite a trip hazard there. I can see angles. We take a look at it. Yeah, or I, I guess you have that asphalt in the bag that would work around the whole item. In my personal opinion, so of course, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm not going to get a chance to. I won't be around tomorrow, but in the near future. Um, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Morio. Uh, last Tuesday, um, I attended our regular scheduled cow meeting for a number of ISOs. Discussed. Uh, tomorrow uh, I have a Prairie Mountain Health Board meeting where I'll be hopefully getting an update on progress for the CT scanner 
um, what kind of communication there is between shared health and Grey Mountain Health on that project. So keeping the pressure on that so that doesn't get put off by the wayside. Um, and then, yeah, congratulations to all the councillors that are acclaimed in the town, along with Mayor Jacobson. Thank you to the outgoing councillors, Mr. Antoni, Jason, uh, Dory, Hill. Thank you uh, for your service. It's been much appreciated. Um, and I also want to thank uh, or congrats all the other uh, councillors that have already been acclaimed in their awards throughout the, the valley. Um, but also I want to put out a huge thank you to uh, all the individuals that have put their name forward that are going to go through the election. Um, looking at the results for what's going out there, uh, who's contesting what in each ward. Um, it'll definitely uh, make a little bit of a different dynamics on some councils, even our council, some dynamics will change. So hopefully that uh, will bring some fruition to some uh, productive conversations going forward. So it's my appreciation to all people who step forward and <coughs> put their name forward for uh, running for council. So, so, uh, regrettably, uh, we're not having an election in the town, uh, but uh, people uh, have spoken and not enough individuals came forward. So. It is what it is. That's it. Thanks. Last but not least today. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, congratulations, Your Worship, on a successful uh, outcome on another term for you. Um, and congratulations to the two, three sitting at the table that uh, uh, were acclaimed along with the other candidates that are acclaimed as well. So congratulations to you. Um, Councillor Delorier. Um, you weren't part of that group and uh, again thank you on behalf of myself for all the things that you taught me while I was sitting at this table and uh, for all the all the things that you have done for our community and many years served so congratulations and thank you and hopefully you enjoy your time at, it is, at whatever it is that you will be doing um, and for myself of course I will not be joining this table again next term uh, other than that I have nothing else to report tonight Thank you. Okay, well thank you and also good words around the table and you know we're talking about the election for 2022 and moving forward and uh, my hope is that we have you know good councils uh, right across the whole entire valley that can work together and, and, and move forward in, in, the, in the spirit and the, and the goodness of everything in the Sonoma Valley. Uh, other than that, what was mentioned, of course I do thank all of members of council their time to be on the ballot and serve at this table. It's not always as easy as what it might appear to be, and it's a, lots of different challenges. And I thank those who are, are leaving us, and, and thank you for your service. I'm sure that there'll be more of that to come in the next month before we head into the next term. Uh, and then congratulations also to those who have been acclaimed, and I look forward to meeting with them and, and chatting with them in the next month. Uh, Truth and Reconciliation. Uh, September the 30th. Uh, I encourage you all to come out and, and uh, have a parade, I believe, but, or March is going to start at the uh, Friendship Center uh, on that date, so come out and, and, and give support. Uh, also, I, I do uh, say that we, as the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation, did meet, I think, uh, one of our, I guess it'll be our second last time, uh, we went over our financials. If anybody is interested in hearing that, just come up and chat with me. I will forward them off to Mr. Ganita here shortly. Um, but uh, we had a good meeting. We had uh, a few new members on the um, on the board. Uh, so we had a little bit of turnover, but we'll be meeting one time just before the election uh, moving forward. And like I had mentioned earlier that uh, we had uh, five nurses sign return service agreements. I believe I've mentioned that maybe the last time, but I'll mention it again. And then lastly, without least, I guess, you know, like we uh, mentioned it, uh, last week, but obviously we had a period of mourning for Her Majesty the Queen, and uh, we lost her after 70 years of, of reign, and, and that's an amazing uh, time that she went through, uh, wartime, and, and then the different changes that uh, followed afterwards. And she did an outstanding job and, and did her uh, country and, and the Commonwealth and all its realms uh, very well, and we thank her for her service and and maybe she uh, rest easy, 
and knowing that she's done an, an outstanding job. And uh, there's more to that, uh, and God save the king. I mean, with that, Mr. Poole, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, I did post a written report. If council has any questions, I can take those. Uh, as for some upcoming meetings, uh, I did meet with the AMM and with the Canada Infrastructure, the Feds, and the, the discussion was really about granting processes. Uh, they tried to keep it to transportation, but it definitely spilled into how the Feds could help the municipalities. Uh, and it, it, it was the first of many meetings, but uh, uh, it's basically how the feds can improve their granting process. So it's an interesting meeting. Uh, I'll be uh, attending the MMA district uh, meeting on September 23rd uh, for updates on the Order of Council. Uh, again, provincial grants and council governance will be a topic for sure with the election this year. And also with our, our local realtor who's winning better to set up an agreement to sell our, our vacant lots, get that going. And as well <coughs> with the Ag Society, uh, as we told their their committee that uh, we'll be reviewing our land, current land use agree agreements and uh, modernizing, or at least getting the process to do so. Uh, yeah, and, and obviously working on the new council's orientation. Councilor White. Uh, on, on your issues of votes, uh, Mr. Poole, uh, uh, important issues the council may wish to spend time on. I'm not privy to why that's there. Future of G4 meetings, is there some indication you have that this is something we shouldn't continue? Because I, for one, think it's really important. No, no, I, it, it's not there to say that whether it should or shouldn't be there. More rather, if, if, you're, if you're unhappy of how it's going, just, just basically, we're open to change. The, the G4, G7 meetings uh, should absolutely be there. Just, is there any context that we're missing? Is there some other process that we should be doing? Okay, thank, thank you. Further question? Okay, that concludes that. We'll move on to new business eight. 8.1. Resolve that variance order one, 2022 or 222 8th Avenue North, Lot 6, Plan 3208, be approved. Moved by Councillor Deloria, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Whereas March is amyloidosis, Awareness Month, a month dedicated to raising awareness, funding, research, and supporting those living with amyloidosis and their loved ones. And whereas amyloidosis is a group of diseases that occur when an abnormal protein known as amyloid, how do you say that word? Amyloid. What's that? Amyloid. Amyloid builds up in the tissues and organs of the body that left untreated can result in organ failure and can be fatal. And whereas amyloidosis can mimic the signs and symptoms of more common medical conditions and disease can be cha challenging to, the diagnose, to diagnose. And whereas amyloidosis can affect people in middle age and older adults, but younger people can be, me, have been diagnosed with this disease as well. And whereas some of the signs and symptoms of amyloidosis can include, include shortness of breath, weight loss, fatigue, swelling in the ankles and legs, numbness in the hands and feet, foamy urine, carpal tunnel syndrome, bruising around the eyes, and enlarged tongue. And whereas early diagnosis can lead to better outcomes for both the patient and their families. And whereas raising awareness about all the amyloidosis disease including hereditary and non-hereditary forms of the disease can contribute to the building of healthier communities across Canada. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River reckon, re, hereby recognize that March 2023 as Amyloidosis Awareness Month within the town of Swan River. Moved by 
Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Montoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3, resolve the Town of Swan River acknowledge our commitment as owners of the Swan River Centennial Arena retrofit project. Moved by Councilor Pavic, seconded by Deputy Mayor Montoni. Discussion? Councilor Morgan. Um, I'm assuming that this is a formal process for some grant application that we need to make this That's new resolution. We, we have nothing saying we have current control. We need, that's what they need for the grant application. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4. Resolve that in honor of the late Queen Elizabeth II, the town of Swan River observed September the 19th, 2022, alone as a day of mourning. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10, 10.1. Resolve that. The accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29378 to number 29436, totaling $137,811.96 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5170 to number 5175, totaling $10,328.21 as listed on Schedule B. Direct Deposits totaling $123,785.77 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Secretary Marilyn Tony, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick, then Councillor, uh, sorry, Councillor Morio, then Councillor Bobbick. Uh, check number 29384 is for ditch mowing for the 2022 season. I'm just wondering. Mr. Harvey? I don't believe we get reimbursed from that waste for that. So we're mowing their ditches at our expense? Yeah, because they would just leave them like on Highway 10. If, if anything, if, if we can, uh, Councilor Bobbick at the AMM have a chance to speak with the MTI Minister. Uh, Councillor Morio. Uh, check number 29420. I, I know what it's for, um, but the vehicle and pump and monthly storage. Um, how long, like, and this has been there a number of times, how long are we going to continue paying that before we exercise our right uh, under the under bylaw where we can dispose of that instead of paying this impoundment fee on a continuous basis? Like, it's going to get to the point where these things. Like, I'm sure we've invested more in the problem of easing with these vehicles or work for scrap, so. Yes. Uh, there, there is a time, I, I'm not sure what it is. I'd have to get back to you. Okay. There's yeah. a time when we're Yeah, no rush. Work. Work. Cause I, I got there impound. It's, it's like you got so many days or so many months to get it before it's liquidated as abandoned. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's all I got. Council White. Yeah, check number 29393 is a $24,000 remittance to uh, the public schools finance board for uh, education tax Do we, does that take a lot of time to find out how much it is add it up subtract it and send them the check and if so do we charge them for that i don't charge but uh, to answer the first question maybe cfo Gadita would like to respond to that it takes only a few minutes to do the calculation okay thank you that's fine further discussion all in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Result the financial statements for the eight months ending August 31st, 2022, be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 
Whereas the 2022 capital budget included $50,000 for a tractor, cab, mower, and blade, which has been purchased at a cost, including advertising for tender and excluding the GST of $54,203.32. And whereas the 2022 financial plan including $510,000 transfer from accumulated surplus of which $50,000 was, uh, was to be used for this purchase. But whereas $25,000 was contributed to the recreation facilities reserve for major repairs in the 2021 fiscal year to be used for this purchase. Therefore, be it resolved that $25,000 be transferred from the recreation facilities reserved for major repairs and $29,203.32 be transferred from the accumulated surplus both to the general operating fund. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Whereas the town of River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on property, private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $6,085.10. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that the notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective October the 1st, 2022. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Councilor Bobbick, did you have a question? Yeah. Okay, we'll take that back. Okay, uh, invoice 20261, uh, but I'm looking at the garbage pickups here, and so I'm under the understanding if they don't pay those on their tax bill, at what time do we stop providing the service or can we? Uh, I'll have to check the roll number on that one. If it's a business, then uh, yeah, we can stop it. I'll have to check which roll number that is though to see which business that is to make sure that that's been stopped. Okay, and I guess my point is that, yeah. I know there was one that CFO uh, contacted me though with some with outstanding amounts. So I'm thinking that's the one, but I'll just confirm okay. that by email. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Resolve the bylaw 220, 2022 being a bylaw to amend the business license bylaw be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, second by Dipper Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councilor Morio? Um, I've read this a number of times and I just want to be sure I'm clear on here um, that this bylaw does not prohibit or force like kids that go around in the summer cutting grass or shovel someone's sidewalk for five bucks or have a lemonade stand um, for having to dish out a $50 business license if they're gonna sell lemonade for a bar, a, a glass. Like it is, uh, when you look at what, uh, which one was it, where it says individuals, but there's nothing, so am I just reading too much into that or can those individuals fall under that? And, yeah, we won't be going after the 12 year old lemonade stands. Uh, the, 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 the only change really was was to change the wording to match our practice. So we were practicing a process that was not in the bylaw, which was 
basically uh, waiving the license fees for people who pay business taxes. We now have written that in there, that if you pay a business tax, the business license uh, is waived. Okay. The fee is waived. Anything further, Councillor? No, I just wanted clarification on that, that we won't be um, targeting or going after kids for getting some exercise, cutting lawn. And I would certainly hope not. Um, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.2, resolve that bylaw 20, 2022, be bylaw to amend the business license bylaw be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? It's a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. 11.3, resolve the bylaw 21, 20, 2022 being a bylaw to consolidate and amend our animal control bylaws be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? Councilor Bobic, or sorry, Councilor Morio. Uh, can I get this like to be also just included in our next Cal meeting where we can uh, review this and pick it apart between first and second reading? Okay. Yeah. Because this is just first reading to get it on the books to, That's to pick it apart. Yeah. Or allow the public to, to chime in also. Absolutely. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 152.3 the pursuits of sections 152 3 of the municipal act council go into committee and close the meeting to the public we have legal matters purchase services library and a provincial order and council update moved by council white seconded by deputy mayor one tony discussion all in favor carried we're in camera result of this regular account meeting of council be adjourned at 9.35, moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.